On today's episode of P-Dubs Arcade Loft, we're going to take a look at the well-played arcade three-quarter scale pinball machine. Coming in at 85% to scale of a standard pinball machine, Well Played Arcade has the newest offering in the in-home consumer cost-effective affordable arcade and pinball space. As of the recording of this video, this product is only available at GameStop through online purchases only. Taking a quick look at the spec sheet on this thing, you do have volume controls, stereo speakers, a backlit back box, 8 gigabytes of internal storage for adding additional games. It does come with Wi-Fi, but it does not come with Wi-Fi 5.0, it just has standard Wi-Fi. A USB port for charging as well as adding more games. The ability to download and install new playing fields does come with 27 preloaded Zachariah games, a mechanical plunger, flipper buttons, and of course a 24 inch TFT screen. Does appear that everything is outputting at 720p resolution. Assembly on this unit out of the box should take you 10 to 20 minutes. The main body cabinet is already pre-assembled for you. All you have to do is flip it over upside down and screw in your legs, four screws per leg on every single leg. And of course, there's no adjustable feet, but this thing is mega tall. You're not gonna need to raise it up. Although the unit is really tall, it's not heavy at all. It is a very light pinball machine. Once you screw your legs in, you just flip it over, take the back box, Plug in the cable from the main body unit into the back box, screw in the back box, and you're done. On the front of the cabinet, you have your power button, you have your analog stick here that you could use as a mouse for navigating the menus, you have your volume up and down buttons, as well as a USB port for adding more games, as well as charging devices. You do have a plunger right here. Plunger's got a nice loud snap to it, but it acts just like a button press. This particular plunger does not have any kind of hull effect technology behind it or things of that nature. It's not a precision plunger. It's literally like just hitting a button on a machine. The plunger is definitely an opportunity for improvement. You cannot perform skill shots or anything of that nature with that plunger like you can with some other options in this marketplace. Also taking a look at the artwork, not everyone is gonna like this design. On the left hand side here, you see you just have a single flipper button and of course a good view of the artwork that kind of reflects the fun wacky tables and artwork designs of the Zachariah tables built into this machine. My wife loves it, me, it's a little weird for me personally, but it's personal. And by personal, I mean different strokes for different folks. Me personally, I think this is a little bit too wacky, too out of this world for me. I also don't like the fact that it says pinball everywhere on every side of the machine. Plus we got some random numbers, one, two, three, four, five, mixed in there. Uh, my wife loves the artwork. You'll notice on the right hand side of the pinball machine, you do have a flipper, but as well as an extra nudge button. I mean, in all honesty, once you turn the games on and start playing, you kind of forget what the machine looks like. As you can see right there, you have your flipper button, as well as a nudge button that you can also use for menu navigation. Since that analog mouse control isn't the best, which I'll show you later in the video, it's really cool you can use those buttons to navigate. Looking at the monitor and the bezel and where everything is mounted, we have some good things and bad things here. So for starters, they do have this recessed about a half inch to a three quarter inch into the cabinet, which is really cool. Helps add a little bit of depth to the play field, helps make you think that, hey, this thing isn't smushed up against the top of the cabinet, the screen, nice little indentation there. Uh, nice win there by Well Played Arcade. However, uh, we just have this very cheap acrylic bezel covering the monitor. This bezel is comparable to the uh, cheap plexi acrylics you find on other three quarter scale in-home arcade machines, but I wish they would have gone glass here like some of those companies have gone on their pinball machines. I'm not a fan of these companies putting in the cheap acrylic plexi overlays on these pinball machines. Glass is definitely required. Another quick miss here by Well Played, no scoring on the back box. That's right guys, we have this giant oversized back box, but no secondary score display. No DMD, no alphanumeric displays, nothing. Just a couple of three inch speakers, which by the way, the speaker quality, pretty good. The games all sound really loud and really good on this machine. So far, the lack of a analog plunger, the lack of uh, glass over the playfield, 
And of course, the lack of a secondary score display is making me worried here that that $500 was not worth the asking price. We do have some other opportunities for improvement as well as some pros and cons to show here on this cabinet, of course. Taking a look at the back of the cabinet, you do have easy access by removing the screws to mod this thing or do some tinkering if you wanna make this even better. Once you remove these screws from the back box on the top half, you can access the top of the back box here. You'll see you just have a couple of cheap LEDs uh, used to illuminate the back box, which you can easily replace or just add additional LEDs of your own. Uh, and of course, you can get back here to access the speakers in order to change out the speakers. Very difficult to get your hands in there or make any changes. You'll have to undo these screws and take that wooden board out there, that brown wooden board, to access the speakers for any kind of speaker mod. Although I don't think that's going to be necessary to, uh, you know, take all this apart to replace the speakers unless you're doing a major renovation to this machine. Uh, the, get, the sound quality from the speakers that are stock are good enough for the games included. Sound pretty good. Inside of the cabinet here, you see the ribbon cable you need to plug in when you first assemble uh, the back glass to the main body. And you can kind of take a look in here and see what we got going on. As you can see, you got plenty of storage space in here. Might need to add some ventilation. You could use this as a kit uh, to mod and turn into a big time machine if you wanted. But taking a look here, you just have their PCB board connected to their monitor and the buttons and all that kind of stuff. No haptic feedback, no accelerometer, nothing of that nature. No solenoids. Powering on the machine is a breeze. All you got to do is hit that little power button on the front of the machine and the speakers will light up instantly, letting you know the machine is booting up and then the main interface will begin to load. And this right here is another opportunity for improvement for well played. These two blinking LED strips with the Christmas lights on them does not fully illuminate the back box like it does in their advertisements. I mean, this just doesn't look good at all in my opinion. I would have just gone with very bright LEDs just illuminating the entire back box instead of these blinking images. But then again, this is something you can easily mod. However, whether you are in a room with standard lighting, in a room with minimal lighting, or in a room with zero lighting, as you can see, the entire back box does not light up. And if you ask me, that is just, it's just a waste of space at that point. I'm not trying to sound cruel, I just think that this is a big opportunity for improvement along with the other items I've addressed. Luckily, we can mod this easily, just throw a big bright LED strip in there and everything will be fine. Taking a look at the lock bar, once again, this is a thing where they hit a home run, but also there's opportunity for improvement. So we have a very small rounded edge on the corners, very, very small but still it's pointy enough where it's gonna hurt your hands after extended gameplay. But I'll tell you what, this textured finish on this lock bar, although it's an oversized lock bar, it feels great. I love the finish. All right, guys, enough about the build quality. There are a bunch of opportunities for improvement there, as well as changes in design that Well Played could do, simple changes that'll really make this product worth that $500 price tag. Hopefully they'll make those changes in the future. But let's dive into the software and how everything runs and is this a good gameplay experience, especially since it has eight gigabytes of internal memory, again, where you can buy and add additional games. As of today, the store's not open. And taking a look here at the analog stick that we try to use on the front of the machine for navigation, I find this to be a bit clunky. When you first start pressing the mouse, it kind of crawls, 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 then it takes off like a rocket. So navigating the menus with the mouse, unfortunately, not a big fan of it. I think that needs a little bit of improvement. Maybe just a firmware update since this is an online capable machine. Adjust the sensitivity of the mouse. But in the meantime, you can navigate using the plunger as an enter button and the side buttons on the pinball machine to navigate the menus. And that's good enough for me. That's right, dudes. That's what one thing that I do think Well Played has going for them is that this is a Wi-Fi connected machine. So there could be updates to the firmware, to the software, in order to get things up to speed in case if there's any opportunities for improvement. I think that's a big win for Well Played, including Wi-Fi in this device. And not only can they make updates to the machine, but with the instruction booklet included with the machine, they will have a website up and running soon for you to download new games you purchase on a thumb drive, plug it into the machine and upload them onto the device, or you could download them, play the, 
buy the games on the website and have them download straight to the machine. That's what you gotta love about Wi-Fi or a connected machine. But as of the recording of this video, the store is not open yet. So I'm not able to access what games we can add, purchase, and what those costs are gonna be. I'm assuming the entire Zakaria lineup. In the meantime, let's take a look at these 27 included games and how everything performs on this machine. You'll notice that the Zakaria Magic Pixel interface here is gonna look very similar to what you see on your Android phone, especially because it does appear this is running an Android operating system. And of course, this does mirror what you see with Zakaria playing it off of Steam, off of Xbox, the Switch, what have you. Now taking a look here, the 27 games included with this cabinet are the remake tables from Zakaria, remakes of their original pinball tables. Everything's been updated with newer features, newer rules, everything like that. Newer designs of the tables, newer ramps. And what I do like about these 27 games is there is a game for everybody. There's scary games, there's combat games, there's fantasy games, there's sports games. There's games for everybody. There's clown games for the kids. There's something for everybody in this selection. Now, because this is running Android and also outputting at 720p on this particular monitor, you'll kind of notice as you zoom in on the play field and stuff that a lot of the sacrifices were made in the graphic quality compared to the Zachariah games running on other platforms. You'll notice that you can kind of see the jagged edges everywhere on the play field, on the flippers, on the play field assets, things of that nature. Um, some of the stuff looks really good. I think the average person isn't even going to notice this. I think they're going to look at it and think it looks fine and just play the games. Um, but only the most hardcore enthusiast is really going to look at this and say, hey, you know what? A 1080p monitor or a 4K monitor would have been better. I do like that DMD at the top of the screen. It's very small. It's not distracting. Um, but then again, they should have gone with a secondary score display somewhere on the back box. The most important thing is how do the games run? Do they run well? And are they fun? Happy to report that they are definitely running at 60 frames per second. I've played through all of these 27 games. I've spent a lot of time playing on this machine over the last week. Uh, same with my wife. And there's really no loss of frame rates, no frame skipping, nothing like that. No flipper delay, which is hugely important. There's no input delay whatsoever. The ball and the gameplay and the table mechanics, everything works the way it should. Big win for well played for making sure that they hit a home run on the gameplay experience. I also love the effects on the ball. The ball actually looks like it's rolling around the table versus some other platforms or studios where their ball looks like it's just sliding across the table or floating across the table. The ball here looks really, really good. Another win for well played is having the ability to have your local leaderboards save on this device. It will save up to the five top highest scores on every single one of the tables. You could even reset the scores if you wanted. Um, and of course, a lot of the um, tracking and leaderboard statistics that come standard with Zakaria on other platforms are here. Because this is a firmware capable machine, I hope global leaderboards will happen down the road in a future update. Here's another feature that's supposed to be cool but is kind of awkward is to access the table menu settings if you wanted to customize each table. You have to hold down both of the flipper buttons when a table is launched and somehow, some way, reach over and pull out that plunger button and that'll pop out the bottom menu. I wish there was just an easier way to access this uh, in order to get to the table menus, but from here you can call the attendant you can take a look at the game rules, what your goals are for each game, and of course adjust the options. When it comes to the options, you can just simply adjust the resolution, whether you have it on normal, uh, balanced, or quality. I didn't notice that big of a difference uh, on the screen itself. Uh, the changes itself were minimal. You can have the motion blur on or off, and then of course get back to the main menu. Unfortunately, that resolution setting didn't really do much for me. Everything looks pretty much the same. The biggest swing and miss for me on this device is the fact that on the right hand side, you have a nudge button, but all it does is forward nudge. As you can see there with the balls, you hit the forward nudge and the balls will nudge forward. And when you're playing the game, you can hit the forward nudge 
and uh, nudge the table forward during gameplay. However, there's no side nudge. Zachariah is knows what side nudge is. They do offer side nudge on all their other platforms, but as you can see here, all we have is a forward nudge. So when playing pinball, not having side nudges left or right, in my opinion, is a big swing and miss. And I just don't understand how this got released without side nudge buttons at the bare minimum, especially without a built-in accelerometer. All right, guys, so as we kind of take a look here at a $500 price tag, uh, but with all the things that need to be improved on this to really justify that $500 price tag, such as we need to have glass uh, over the play field, we need to have a secondary score display, we need to have um, nudge buttons on the side of the machine at the bare minimum for left and right nudge, or throw an accelerometer in there. Um, or, and also we uh, need to have probably a better plunger and more of an analog uh, type plunger with hull effect, precision type accuracy to it. Things like that would really justify this with a $500 price tag. Considering that, you know, what all the other companies that are offering these cost-effective pinball machines are offering for 50 bucks more or 100 bucks more, you're getting a lot more value with those products than you are with this one at a $500 price tag. In all honesty, I think this thing should have came in around $400 and not $500. Even the Toy Shock has more features at a more competitive price point than this particular device. However, that machine is not Wi-Fi enabled and you're not able to expand the game library. I think if Well Played puts all these other improvements into place, they will definitely be a contender. They'll definitely have a pretty decent product for everybody. Uh, as it stands right now, I think the general fan who picks this up or plays it, they're probably going to enjoy it. More folks who are more pinball enthusiasts, kind of like myself, we're probably going to shy away from this product. But then again, it's totally up to you, uh, knowing that there are other options out there at a more competitive and value-driven price point. Overall, guys, I think that uh, Well Played has got some opportunities for improvement. I hope to see that happen in the near future. Really appreciate it when you guys hang out upstairs with me. Apologies for the super, super long review. As always, guys, give us a thumbs up on the way out, and thank you for subscribing.